Welcome back. We are going to get into the um, ninth Enneagram. We're saving the best for last. It's also the one that I am and Hani. And so, yeah, we just saved the best for last. But um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and dig into the Peacemaker. Um, but before we do that, just as usual, the link is below the video and the notes are available there as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with the last Enneagram. This is the last one as the number nine, and um, it is called the Peacemaker. So um, we are going to talk about Jonah today, um, and a lot of you guys who know my story, um, I love Jonah. He's like probably my favorite Bible character, so it's very fitting that he is with my Enneagram type um, in the story of Jonah, as many of you guys know. Um, kind of helped bring me to Indonesia specifically. So I love that Jonah is the Bible character for the peacemaker. And then the Bible reference that we're going to go with today is Ephesians 4.15. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. And just with all the other Enneagrams, our goals for today is to better understand the peacemaker, their strengths, weaknesses, and communication styles. So probably you guys are going to get a little bit more detail about the peacemaker just because um, this is the one I have done the most uh, research with and kind of through my own um, journey through this um, that I talked about at the opening Enneagram session. Um, yeah, definitely I've learned a lot about myself kind of through this, and so, and a lot of that has been kind of through this, um, the Enneagram 9 and the Peacemaker. So you might get just a little bit more detail because this is the one um, I know the most about. But the Enneagram type 9 is called the Peacemaker. They are often described as peaceful, reassuring, complacent, and neglectful. And so I think, um, yeah, as always, there's, you know, strengths and weaknesses. Um, and the peacemaker is really great at um, kind of bringing peace into situations, being kind of a calm person in a group, um, thinking about ways to have peace, um, kind of being the mediator between people and helping kind of them communicate um, is definitely what a peacemaker is really good at. Um, some of the kind of weaknesses of a peacemaker is in something that I personally struggle with um, is just becoming kind of complacent, neglectful, um, honestly a little bit apathetic or lazy. Um, when things are hard or when I know something's going to have conflict. Conflict is like the hard one for the, um, the peacemaker. And when you know that conflict is going to come up or you need to um, kind of talk to somebody in, um, in a conflict situation, uh, oftentimes I know that I can become apathetic or just say, oh, it's not even going to matter anyways, and I just kind of bow out because I don't really want to deal with the hard conversation that it takes um, to kind of resolve that conflict. So I definitely see that in myself um, many times in many stories kind of throughout my life of um, just wanting to avoid conflict and not wanting um, to go there and not wanting to kind of embrace the, the conflict and what you can learn through that conflict. Um, the besetting sin, so the sin that often um, times people that are a nine can struggle with is um, being slothful or being a sloth. Um, I mean, a super cute animal, I love it, but uh, just kind of what I was talking about before, um, just being a little bit lazy, not necessarily wanting to uh, make things better, kind of becoming complacent or apathetic about a situation. Um, I know when I'm really stressed, um, I sleep. I just want to like go to bed and just sleep for hours upon hours. And um, my roommates can tell you, especially during this season of my life, I have been sleeping a lot. <laughs> um, it's kind of how I deal with stress. And so I think sometimes just kind of that avoidance can easily kind of come into my heart where I just don't want to deal with things. And so I either sleep or I just watch TV or I'm kind of 
walk away from my problems. And so that's definitely something in my life that I have specifically seen just in the last few months, specifically um, is when I'm stressed out, I kind of go to that avoidance game. And I think for me, a big avoidance is either watching TV or um, just sleeping. <laughs> sleeping a ton. So uh, my room is like very dark, so I call it the cave, and so I can just sleep for hours. Yeah, Harvey, but Harvey's so good. She sleeps a lot too. But um, yeah, so and definitely the underlying emotion though um, that nines can often struggle with is guilt and um, kind of guilt that they're not doing enough or guilt that they're not um, dealing with problems in the way that they they should, um, kind of that avoidance. So we want to avoid. Um, so we kind of say, oh, we're not going to deal with this conflict. So we go over there. But then we have a lot of guilt about not dealing with it. Um, and we kind of take it um, to our core. And then we, that guilt just kind of like piles up. So I think oftentimes that emotion of guilt is what actually drives a lot of our um, decisions is I know for me, um, I've definitely struggled with this, that I've like not went and talked to somebody um, in conflict and I then felt guilty about it. And then, so then I'm like, oh, I should have just done it because now I have to deal with this guilt. And so um, it's kind of a game. You want to avoid, but you also don't want to have guilt. So they kind of like work together to... Um, kind of shape when you avoid situations or when you're going to um, confront them. Um, and then nines often believe that they must uh, maintain peace and calm, um, especially like in groups. So if someone is um, kind of having a conflict, they, they really want peace and they're always like searching for peace. So they might change the subject or they might... Um, kind of step in to try to like leave it and make it just more calm. Um, a funny story that happened here many years ago, um, it's probably a good seven years ago. Um, Clarissa will remember this. I think, and Beth, I think those are the ones that were there during this time. Um, we were having a lunch with just a bunch of teachers and uh, a conflict arose about political things. And so there was, you know, different opinions. Um, and we're sitting um, in the classroom. And, you know, people are starting to get a little bit more heated. And I, like, just did not love the conflict. Like, I was like, oh, this is just so annoying. And I was wearing this Elmo shirt um, that said Happy Lane on it. What a good shirt, right? And so I just got up, or I think I just, like, turned to them and said, hey, who likes my shirt? Like, I totally tried to, like, take away the conflict and by just distracting everybody. Um, and then it just became a joke, specifically with Clarissa, that she always says, hey, whenever you change the, the subject abruptly, you say, hey, who likes my shirt? So, um, but that, I think, really shows the heart of a peacemaker is that conflict and, like, people arguing really makes um, nines feel uncomfortable. And so I think they'll kind of try to do almost anything to not um, deal with that emotion or deal with that conflict. Um, but as Jason will talk about, nines at their best are some of the best mediators for conflict. So I think that that's um, kind of the interesting part about it. They so badly don't want conflict, but they're some of the best people to help mediate conflict. And I've also seen that in my life, that when I am at my best, I can, God can really use me to bring peace and to um, help mediate situations, but I so badly at my worst want to avoid them. So, all right, Jason's going to come up and talk about kind of spiritual formations and my boy Jonah. So, all right, thank you, Kristen. And I hope you've all enjoyed these CEUs this, uh, this semester. And I want to just thank Kristen for uh, being willing to. Uh, partner with me in this. Uh, she's certainly more knowledgeable on the Enneagram and I think has done an amazing job in helping us to all learn a little bit more about these different personality types. So let's just give her a big virtual round of applause 
Yes, I'm sure she heard that through the TV screens and computers today. Yeah, she heard it. So, um, yeah, so we do thank Kristen for all of her hard work and pouring into us. Yeah, Jonah is certainly a classic nine, or peacemaker, right? And so uh, we see this uh, just all through the thread of his, of his life, um, or at least what we know about his, his life. Uh, God, God calls him to go to Nineveh. Nineveh seems like, it doesn't seem like it is a pretty crazy and corrupt place. And, uh, so Jonah says, Hey man, I can't handle this. Um, uh, so I'm going to escape that thought of conflict and, uh, sort of run away from, run away from God, run away from what I perceive is going to be, going to be conflict and uh, gets, on a, gets on a ship to sail in the other direction, right? And of course, on that ship comes another conflict as God sends these amazing storms that threaten to uh, overturn the, the boat. And uh, they're like, who is responsible for this? And, and of course, that falls on, on Jonah. And uh, Jonah... Uh, you know, allows the guys with to, to to make peace in these storms. They throws them overboard and gets swallowed by this this great fish. And and while in there, God gives them this other opportunity. Hey, you know, go go uh, go speak to the Ninevites. Go share the Ninevites my message of redemption and and repentance. And and uh, of course, Jonah. Uh, wanting to wanting to make peace with this situation, realizing if it'll get me out of this belly of the well, I'll go do it, right? And so he reluctantly, uh, to make peace, agrees to this, and and uh, well spits him out, and he then goes to Nineveh and and uh, uh, preaches to the Ninevites, and surprisingly enough, they end up do repenting and. Um, then, then Jonah's sort of mad at God about, God, how, how could you let this, this happen? And, and in my mind, I'm always thinking, but Jonah, this is what you just preached and what every follower of God, believer in God and follower of Christ should ever want, right? But this makes Jonah mad uh, that, that, this, that this happened this way. And again, we just see ups and downs of Jonah's life in every situation. It's just like... He does whatever it takes to appease the situation or to make peace in the situation. And uh, uh, for him, there were a lot of high moments and a lot of really, really low moments as well. Spiritual formation for a, for a nine um, is, um, or within the spiritual formation of a nine, there's the temptation, as, as Kristen mentioned, for nines to be uh, slothful or uh, become passive or negligent. Um, and, and sometimes these, these patterns in their lives are, are driven by this um, intense, intense guilt that, that Kristen mentioned to us. Uh, but we, the nines need to be reminded that the Spirit of Christ wants to transform uh, that, that negligence or that sense of, of passivity or guilt into a peace uh, in their lives that uh, is seen with the, with the uh, faithfulness and loving kindness of our, of our Heavenly Father. Uh, some of the things that will come naturally to a nine as they are seeing themselves develop spiritually are, are um, uh, uh, things like nature walks or, or maybe experiencing God through through nature um, like uh, nines most of the time have no problem with just uh, seeing God in in the wonders of, of his creation so just being out in nature many times will Give this, them a sense of connection with their Heavenly Father. Also, of course, peacemaking, which makes sense for a peacemaker, right? That uh, peacemaking would come, come naturally for them. Um, but they really do uh, have a desire to see conflict resolved. And sometimes 
at their, at their weakest, as Krista mentioned. That can be an avoidance of conflict. They see themselves making peace. And we see that with Jonah a lot, right? He, his, his peacemaking was, was coming uh, by, by n- neglecting conflict. But, but peacemakers really are uh, great, great peacemakers who can really help resolve conflict when they are in, a healthy, in healthy places. Um, some, of the, some of the spiritual challenges of a nine are, are things like fixed times of prayer. Um, in, in, the, in Judaism, um, at least in the ancient world, they were oriented around three specific times of prayer in morning, noon, and, and evening prayers. Uh, and that was a great practice in the early church that they adapted from their, uh, their roots in Judaism. Um, for, for a nine, those specific times of prayer can be, can be challenging, yet so, so important uh, just to, to maybe several times within the course of a day to find themselves re-centered uh, on, the, on the Prince of Peace in what can oftentimes be such a chaotic, a chaotic world, not just in the morning time, but throughout the day doing that. Um, also, things like a, a Bible reading plan uh, can, be, can be challenging and yet so helpful for a, for a nine because it allows them to be diligent and focused uh, on the Word of God, where they can really take time and again be recentered on the Father's voice. Uh, nines at their at their worst um, in wanting to block out um, block out of awareness of anything that could negatively affect them. They can many times disassociate with so much. Um, uh, and from and disassociate with others so much that it's hard for them to really function. Um, and so, but at their best, uh, they are optimistic and reassuring and supportive people. Um, and they they really do have this calming uh, and and healing influence upon those around them. That's why so many of us love Kristen Lane so much, right? Because was it Happy Lane? Happy Lane is in the house, and it's a calming influence upon all of our all of our lives. A great Bible verse for uh, for nines are Ephesians fourteen. Rather than speaking the truth, or rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into into Christ. Um, the world the world needs the objective. Uh, voices of a nine. Um, they have a unique ability to, to bring harmony and restore, restore peace. So in faith, they must learn to, to be bold and declare the truth, uh, but to do so in love. Uh, and they can replace the fear of conflict uh, with the comforting reality that the truth, uh, the truth is truly found in Christ and in truth uh, we find real peace. So uh, th- that's the nine and that's wrapping up our, our CEUs on the Enneagram. We do hope that you have found something in these lessons beneficial uh, to you and to your growth and hopefully will bring self-awareness uh, to you. Hopefully will help you to begin a journey, if you haven't already, of self-awareness that will help you to become the best version of yourself. Let's have a word of prayer as we end. Father, we love you and we thank you so much, again, as we've said so many times, for the fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in you. Every one of us are, God. And Father, I pray as we end this, um, these lessons on the Enneagram that you will help us, Lord, to find our identity in you and to become the very best version of ourself, the person that you created us to be, living out the destiny that you created us to live out. We love you and we thank you for this. In your strong and mighty name, amen. We love you guys. Have a great, great summer.